this is what we've all been waiting for. Innovation, progress, pushing the envelope, trailblazing EUC technology. I introduce to you the InMotion V11, the world's first electric unicycle with a kickstand. Wait, so you're not here for the kickstand? Well then you must be here for the world's brightest headlight on an electric unicycle. Oh, you're not here for that either? I know what you're here for. You're here for one of the world's first suspension system. Suspension is tucked away right down there. If you're still watching this video, then you're probably like me. You have a passion for electric unicycles, or at least you're interested in them and you wanna learn more. Well, to give you a context about me and who I am, before we jump into this review on the InMotion V11, my name is Jimmy Chang. I've been riding electric unicycles for just over a year now. Uh, my main ride is my Nikola, um, but I, we also own a Kingsong 16S and a Gotway M103. I've also tried a whole host of other wheels, and uh, so I have some experience. You know, there are enthusiasts out there who are huge speed monsters and range monsters. That's not me. Um, I'm a very conservative rider. There are people that love huge drops and jumps and going downstairs and upstairs. Woo! Nice. That's not me. But I will say that this, this vehicle here has inspired me to, uh, to be a little more daring and try some of those things. So that's a little bit about me. I'm a conservative rider. I'm a middle-aged guy, father of four, and uh, we love to ride. And so I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope you learn something about my thoughts on the InMotion V11. Let's get riding. Who do I think this wheel is for? I think this is a well-rounded workhorse that is great for people that just love to cruise, people that love to go long distances and don't want their knees and their back to take that jarring shock, um, the, the teeth shattering jolts when you go off a little curb or happen to come across a speed bump or a uh, pothole, an unexpected pothole. Um, those things, they jar you and if you're going, you know, this thing has a, a range of like 60 miles advertised, if you're going 60 miles, those jarring shocks take its toll. And if you are a middle-aged guy like me, um, you know, it's not super pleasant after those long rides. And I think a wheel like this can make those rides much more comfortable, much more enjoyable. All right. So it's sprinkling a little bit, but I just wanted to get some of these thoughts out really quickly, all right? If I were to pick one word to describe this wheel. You know, I think adjectives have been thrown around like smooth and big, powerful. I would say that this is a majestic wheel, all right? A majestic wheel. It's not sexy like the S18, but it's majestic, that would be my word. Um, and just like things that are majestic, you expect it to be powerful. You expect it to be smooth. You expect it to be reliable, but your highness or your majesty isn't, isn't all perfect. There are some flaws and we'll get into that, but uh, it's starting to rain a little bit harder. Let's look for shelter here. All right, this looks like a good spot out of the rain. Okay, so this is better. All right, you know, it's, it's a smooth, powerful machine. It feels very majestic. You are riding high. It uh, takes a little bit to dial in that suspension to figure it out. Um, the suspension you change, you uh, add pressure through the bottom valve. There's a top valve on the production models that you'll build the access, but only after 
you take off the outer shell. You need to take off that outer shell to gain access to that top valve. That valve you only put in pressure um, very rarely. I think you have to PSI on that one, whereas the bottom valve you adjust the pressure based off of your weight and your riding preference. The suspension, once I figured it out, once I got it dialed in, it was, it, it rides great. Very smooth, dampens out all those bumps, and uh, just makes it a joy to ride. Gives me more confidence to go fast over those roads with cracks, with those expansion cracks, or just those imperfections in the road, where when I try to go fast on the Nicola, sometimes I get, you know, a little squirrely going over some of those bumps. On this guy, I feel like I'm just gliding right over it. See that bubble coming out. So I don't know if you saw that, but I was actually on my phone, which is a big no-no when you ride. Don't ride and play on your phone. But I was trying to connect the wheel to the uh, UC World app, and I wasn't paying attention, and I came across that big old pothole and went right over it. Um, it wasn't nearly as bad as what it could have been. So I was going at a pretty good speed. I'd probably say mid 20s. I was on my phone, didn't see this pothole as I was riding. Don't text and ride guys, or don't play with your app and ride. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty about doing the suspension and dialing that in because this is a brand new wheel. We're still figuring it out. Things are gonna change, but it takes a little bit of fiddling before you can figure out what's right for you based off of your weight. What I wanna talk about is number one, do we need suspension? Number two, what sacrifices were made so that we could have suspension? And number three, should I spend my hard earned money getting a wheel with suspension? So let's talk about the first one. Do we need suspension? I can say this, you know, I was a critic, a non-believer. I felt that suspension was just kind of a gimmick. Um, you know, it's just one other thing to worry about, one other thing to break down, another moving part, added weight, added cost. We don't need suspension. But now that I've actually tried it, I really, really enjoy it, I can tell you that. I'm gonna do a little stair test here and then we're gonna compare the two. I've got my wheel, the Nikola, Gotway Nikola, and then over there, I've got the InMotion. So, we'll compare both of these. I'll try to hold the camera as steady as I can. So going down the stairs on both these wheels, very different experience. A lot smoother on the in motion, as would be imagined with the suspension. Um, I did have a problem with my feet kind of slipping off the foot pedals with each drop, um, and that's because it just I have grip, ped uh, grip pedals here on my Nicola, which I don't on this in motion, and so that's one of the big differences. But uh, didn't have to bend my knees as much, and didn't have to feel that jarring you know, shock with each impact as much with the InMotion V11 and the suspension. I feel like the InMotion V11 is smooth, it's powerful, and despite its faults, I love the suspension, and I can find this as my daily rider. This road that I'm gonna go on, this trail here, it has a lot of undulations on it. I'm gonna straight leg it right here. Do I need suspension? Yes, I feel like future electric unicycles, high powered, long range electric unicycles should have suspension just to make riding those long distances much more tolerable, which is what the suspension does. It makes riding those long distances not just tolerable, but more enjoyable. What did the engineers at InMotion have to sacrifice in order to stick suspension into this wheel? Well, it seems like over the last few years, there's been such a focus on bigger battery, bigger motor, more power, more speed, more range. And it was almost this law of diminishing return. I mean, can you really go? Do you really need that much range? Do you really need that much speed? I know there's a bunch of you out there saying, yes, you do. But for me, I don't need to go 60 miles or 100 miles on a charge or 50, 60 miles an hour. InMotion has done something unique, something different here this year in the year 2020, and that's add suspension. But in order to add suspension, they've changed a couple things in order to fit that all in there. They got rid of the speaker, so there's no speaker in there. The other thing that they've had to sacrifice, 
actually, I don't know if this is a sacrifice. I think this is an upgrade. But you don't have those those LED lights, those colorful LED lights that dance around that make it look like a kid's toy. This thing actually looks like a vehicle, a vehicle that you could ride in the street. It's got that super bright headlight, that mean looking tail light. This thing is a legit street vehicle. Up until the year 2020, each iteration of the electric unicycle has seen stepwise improvement by just going faster and farther. This guy improves by adding suspension, which I think is a new dimension and I think something that we should see in all long range electric unicycles here in the future from now on. And another sacrifice or a design change that they had to make in order to accommodate the suspension is they had to make the wheel tall. So this is a very tall wheel. It adds to the majestic feel of it, being able to being able to be higher up and stand taller, but because it's tall, it, it'll feel different. And so you just need that because the chassis or the saddle is separate from the motor and the wheel, and that moves up and down. As you can see here, it moves up and down, and so you need that extra space to allow for that movement with the shocks. Before we get into the final question, should I spend my hard-earned money on the InMotion V11, I want to talk a little bit about the flaws that I was alluding to earlier. The, there are some flaws to this Majestic machine. It is not perfect. There is no perfect wheel out there. But this one does have a flaw that I think is pretty glaring and hopefully they'll be able to get this fixed. Let me go show you. So this plastic part that has kind of this soft foam for you to, to rest your knees against, it's broken off. Upon closer inspection, when I take this apart, you can see it's just a very thin piece of plastic that's holding this kind of frame or saddle onto the suspension system. And it's a definite weak point. That right there, I think that's a flaw. It's just a thin plastic. I think they need to replace that with something a little more robust, um, maybe metal or something just more durable than the, the pot plastic that they're using. The other flaw, the kickstand right there. The thing with the kickstand though is it's not super stable. So um, if you're on a little bit of an incline, you know, on my driveway, I tried to, to stand this up and it wouldn't stand up on the driveway. Um, if you're on a little bit of an incline, it's not gonna be steady. Even so, just like this, I mean, a little, little nudge and it's gonna fall, all right? So, I mean, it's not super steady. I wouldn't leave this as my main mechanism to keep this upright in my house, especially with little kids around. I do like the kickstand feature. It makes it really nice when I need to stop and work on my phone or take pictures and um, but just realize that it is a little unstable. As far as other flaws go, I think a lot of it is just personal preference. It does ride higher than other electric unicycles. Um, fiddling around with the suspension does take time. It does take effort to unscrew the caps down below to get access to it and to fill it up with air. If you want to get to the top system, it's even more invasive. You have to take off one, two, three, four bolts, four screws to get to the, the top valve in the production models. And so it's, it's a little more work um, to dial in the suspension. But the reward you get for putting in that extra effort is you'll have the smoothest ride you'll ever experience um, in an electric unicycle, especially if you're comparing it to wheels that do not have suspension. So here we got our two guys. I went from one wheel to EUC. Find a drop? Yeah, yeah, like that. Alright. Wow, nothing. Nice. <laughs> Smooth. Alright, All right, the sun's coming out. So now to the final question. Should I spend my hard-earned money on the InMotion V11? Well, I say variety is the spice of life. 
you can have your speed monster, your speed and range monster. You can have your cruiser, which you can ride in comfort. You can have your small, portable, fun little wheel like the Gotway M10 III. Now I know a lot of you are saying, well, I don't have the money to afford all these different wheels. Well, you know, I feel like this is a good all around wheel. It's got plenty of power. It's super comfortable. It's going to be the most comfortable wheel if you compare it to any of the wheels without a, a suspension system. And um, it's got great range. And so for the price, I feel like this would be a good wheel. If you just could have one or two wheels, this would be a good wheel to have. It's a majestic wheel. It's fun, super comfortable because Opinions, thoughts, reviews are always evolving, always changing as we get more information and get more experience. Make sure to check the link down below my website, oneradwheel.com. You'll find my full and evolving review of everything I've included in this video and more and updates. And so check that out. I'm gonna be meeting Chooch tomorrow from Chooch Tech. He's a high flyer. The guy is like an acrobat on the EUC just with his high flying antics. And so I look forward to picking his brain on the S18, which he's been riding and then uh, giving him a try on the V11. Oh yeah, one more thing. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this defect. Is this something that's gonna be a big headache for in motion to try to fix, or is this something that can be easily remedied, all right? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Um, it's still a beautiful day, so let's go ride. Hey! What's up, man? And then you've got the King Song 6, no, that's the 14D? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How long have you been riding? Uh, about two months.